Hello, everyone. So basically, today we are going to learn the importance of Python. So what is Python? So Python is a high level interpreted language. So what is interpreted? Interpreted is like in the runtime, all the codes will be run line by line. It's not like compiled language as if C or maybe C++. So those are compiled lang languages. So Python is an interpreted language. So you need not compile it. And the other feature is if you have Python installed in your computer, so you can write it once and run anywhere. So this is a very, very useful thing for Python. So coming to the next point, Python is interactive. So what does it mean? You can actually sit at a Python prompt and interact with the interpreter directly. So I'll just give you one example over here. If we open Python. So for example, if we write three plus two, it is giving five. So this means Python is very interactive. Coming to the next point, Python is object oriented. So it supports the object oriented style as if in Java, you might be knowing it is object oriented. And Python is a beginner's language. That means Python is a great language for beginner because it is high level language. And the other thing is you can make games in Python and there are many ways and it is very user friendly. It is very readable. So that's all for this module and hope to see you in the next module that is history of Python. Thank you. Hello everyone. So coming to the next module, we have history of Python. So Python was developed by Judo Van Rossum in the late 80s and early 90s at the National Research Institute for Mathematics and Computer Science in Netherlands. So Python is derived from many other languages which were available at that time. So mostly it's derived from C, C++ and the Unix shell. Python is copyrighted. Like Perl, Python source code is now available under the GNU General Public License, that is GPL. Python is now maintained by core development team at the Institute. Although Yudo Van Rossum still holds a vital role in directing its progress. Python 1 was released in November 1994. In 2000, Python 2 was released. And after that, the Python 2.7.11 is the latest edition of Python 2. Meanwhile, Python 3 was released in 2008 and Python 3 is not backward compatible with Python 2. So it means that if you are writing a program in Python 3, so you cannot run it in Python 2. So it is not compatible. And mostly nowadays, people are using Python 3 only. So if you are new to Python, I would suggest go for Python 3 only. And the latest Python version would be now 3.9, but the document which we are using since it's old, that's why it's showing 3.5.1. So thank you guys for listening to this module. And in the next module, I'll see you again. Thank you so much. Hello everyone. So welcome to your next module that is the future of Python. So we are referring to one article that is written by DZone. DZone is a very good blogging website for articles related to technology. So coming to the future of Python, there are many beautiful aspect of Python. 
as we can see over here python is free of charge that means it cuts your development cost and it improves your productivity the second thing is no support issue that means that it has a big and wide network of developers who are continuously working with python and you can always refer to stack overflow if you have any issue so there is no support issue going on with python and the other important point is cross platform language python is a remarkable language that supports different os and the most amazing feature is fewer lines of code so python programming language is very simple to use and write and you can run it anywhere coming to the popularity of python as you can see in the chart that gradually from year 2018 to 2020 python has gone top of the chart so the reason might be the popularity of data science and machine learning which is growing very fast so we can conclude over here and we can say that python has topped the list of programming language that is straightforward makes it admired among all another languages there is no other language that could compete with it as it is growing at a very rapid pace application such as web or game are usually established with the aid of python language only therefore even in the future it is going nowhere it is planning to go to a new level with ai involvement so thank you guys for listening to this module and i will see you in the next module thank you so much hello guys so welcome to your next module that is job opportunities and top companies using python so as you can see over here the top companies like google facebook instagram spotify quora netflix and dropbox they all are using python in their backend so this implies that python is a very useful language and coming to the job opportunities python is a very perfect language for the 21st century if you know python you can become a python developer apart from that you can opt for project manager you can become data analyst you can become an educator even you can act as financial advisor or you can become a data journalist so the job opportunity is huge and i think you should go for python thank you so much guys for listening to this module and hope to see you in the next module thank you so much hello everyone so welcome to the next module and this module is regarding installation and environment setup so you need to go to google and write python download so as you can see over here this is python.org website from here you can download the latest version for me it's windows so we can directly download from here but if you are using some other operating system like linux mac or even other than that so you can refer to this page so thank you guys for listening and i'll see you in the next module thank you hello guys so welcome to the next module this small module is regarding case sensitive and the reserved keywords so what do do we mean by case sensitive 
So I'll just give you one example. Print I love Python. So when I run this thing, it's coming I love Python. But when I use capital P over here, let's see what happens. See, there is error over here. So this is what we mean by case sensitive. If we are using the small p, then it's coming fine. But if we are using capital P over here, so there will be error. So this means Python is case sensitive. And coming to the reserved keywords, there are list of keywords which are reserved and you cannot use them as constants or variables or any other identifier names. So thank you guys for listening to this module and I'll see you in the next module. Thank you. Hello guys. So welcome to the next module. And this module is regarding important characters and the print function in Python. So coming to the special characters, there are many special characters like slash n for new line, slash t for tab. Tab is, you know, four spaces. And like backspace, slash b. Likewise, there are many special characters. For example, you can see over here, slash n is for new line. So over here, tech has gone to new line. Likewise, if you use slash t, that is one tab, that means four spaces. So likewise, you can see over here the example for the other characters also. Coming to the print function, print function is nothing but whatever you put inside this print function, it will directly output it in the console. So you can try this with numbers also. For example, if you do like this, you'll get output. as five over here, as you can see. So that, thank you guys for listening to this module and I'll see you in the next module. Thank you. Hello guys. So welcome to your next module that is related to input and output operations in Python. So let's start this video with input operations in Python. The Python programming language provides input function to take input into a program from console. So we'll take an example. We will create a script. And we will name it as demo. So this is a Python file and we named it as demo. Now, if we need input, so we can copy from here, go here and paste it. So what it will do is num is a variable which will take input from here and we are going to print it. So let's see. When we run, it's asking for enter number. We can enter any number over here. Two, three, four, five, something. And see after that, it is printing the same number so it is working perfectly mm -hmm. 
and after that coming to the multiple values in one line if you want to take multiple inputs in one line i will give you example for that as well so we can take this example and when we run this the console is waiting for value so first value let's put two second value four separated by a space and we'll get output number of boys two number of girls four so first value is the input for number of boys second is input for number of girls and we are getting the result over here so guys this more module is related to input and output operations so this was the first video of the module and this was related to the input operations in python so hope you guys enjoyed this video and you can try it yourself and let me know thank you so much guys for listening to me hello guys so welcome to the module 3 and this video is related to output operations in python so let's start with a simple example that is print so this is a basic example over here we are going to assign variable a is equal to 7 b is equal to 9 and then we are going to print it let's see how it goes and we are getting output over here as you can see 7 and 9 so this is working perfectly let's go to our next example where we are getting input and after that we are printing that number and when we run this program It's asking for number. We can put two three four and enter number is two three four. So this is also working perfectly. And coming to the next example, if you want the values over here separated by a slash, so you can put a separator over here and you can see. the output over here male female and it's separated by slash and after that you can uh, use this separator for dates as well as you can see over here in example and if you run it it will be printed like this in the output so coming to the next example there is one property called as end so if you put it end and a space so there won't be any line break as you can see over here welcome to python programming course so there is no line break if we remove this end so this two will be coming in different line you can see over here so if you put end over here so this will just put a space over here and after that you can use this modulo operator that is the percentage sign to assign multiple outputs as you can see over here in example see over here it's giving integer 1 float 5.33 so we are using this to provide for the multiple outputs 
similarly there is dot format function and using this you can output any number of values for example 0 1 2 so this should print python programming course and we are getting the output as desired over here so thank you guys for listening to the module 3 and i'll see you in the next module thank you so much hello guys so welcome to the module number 4 that is comments so over here we'll be discussing comments and uses single line and multi line comments and writing effective code with comments so first of all what are comments so comments are basically you know descriptions written to help to understand the program better so these are completely ignored by the python interpreter interpreter is kind of uh, system software running in the background so what it does line by line it reads your program and then gives the output so coming to the advantages of using comments so using comments in programs make our code more understandable it makes the program more readable other than that comments can also be used to ignore some codes while testing so this is very good feature you know while testing if you if you don't want some code or maybe if you want to test it later so you can just comment it out and the interpreter will not read it in real time so thank you guys for listening and we have second video coming next thank you so much welcome guys to the second video of module 4 and in this video we'll be discussing single line and multi line comments and also we'll include this third one writing effective code with comments so let's start so in python we use the hash symbol to write a sim single line comment i'll just give you example so this is a comment over here when you run it you'll be getting the hello world but see the first line the interpreter is not reading it i'll just again run it see nothing is coming so this is basically single line comment and you can write it in same line also like over here when you run it you'll get hello world you'll not get this code so this is ignored by the interpreter so this is also example of single line comment coming to the multi-line comment you can do something like this i mean using the hash three times it won't read it so this is an example of multi-line comments and the other example is over here if you don't want to use hash in every every line so what you can do you can put three columns over here and end it with three columns so whatever is in between this will be a comment so over here we have how to write better comments use comments to describe what a function does and not the speci specific details on how the function does it try to remove as many re redundant comments as possible try writing that code that can explain itself and the last one is try to make the comments as short and concise as possible so thank you guys for listening to this module and i'll see you in the next module thank you so much hello friends so today we are going to discuss module number five 
and the module number five is data types. So starting with data types overview, overview and the basic data types. So what are basic data types? So basic data types are five in Python. That are numbers, string, list, tuple, and dictionary. The data stored in memory can be of many types. For example, a person's age is stored as a numeric value and his or her address is stored as alphanumeric characters. Python has various standard data types that are used to define the operations possible on them and the storage method for each of them. For example, we can store number as where is equal to one or where is equal to 10. So these are, you know, uh, these are numbers. Likewise, if you have a string, you can go for a string or list, tuple, or maybe dictionary. So in the next video, we'll be discussing about integer and the float data type. Thank you guys for listening and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Hello guys, so welcome to your next video. And this video is related to the numbers or the number type. So in Python, we have three number types that is int, float and complex. And coming to the long integers in Python, the integers are represented as by default long integers only. Hence, there is no separate number type as long. And coming to the examples for the integer, we have like 10, 100, minus 786. Likewise, for the float, we have 0 0.0, 15.20, minus 21.9. Likewise, for the complex one, we have example 3.14, J45. J and after that 0.876 J. So likewise, we have for the complex type. Hence, we have three type of numbers that is int, float, and complex. So thank you guys for listening to this video. And in the next video, we'll be discussing Boolean and the string type. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Hello guys, so welcome to the last video of this module that is module 5 and we'll be discussing about the boolean and the string data type. So first of all, let's start with the string data type. String in Python are identified as a contiguous set of characters represented in the quotation mark. So I'll just give you an example over here. Let's go to Python and let's define str is equal to Hello world over here. So when we print str, we should get hello world as you can see over here. If we give zero index over here, we are supposed to get h and we are getting h. If we put one, we, we are supposed to get e and we are getting e. So it's working fine. So this is what we mean by contiguous set of characters represented in the quotation mark. And coming to the plus sign is the string concatenation operator and the asterisk is the repetition operator. So I'll just give you an example. What do you mean by that? So over here we have str and I'll put my name over here that is Nishan and we are supposed to get hello world Nishan. So this is working fine. This is adding that string to it. That is what we mean by concatenation. And if you want to repeat it, that is if we put two an asterisk sign over here, we are supposed to get two times hello world. And we are getting that if we put three, we are supposed to get three times. And this is working fine. So this is all about string now coming to the Boolean. Booleans represent one of the two values that is true or false. In programming, you often need to know if an expression is true or false. 
and you can evaluate any expression in python and get one of the two answers that is true and false true or false for example if we print 10 greater than 9 we are supposed to get true and we are getting true so this is a boolean data type and if we put 10 less than 9 we should get false and we are getting false so this is a boolean data type true and false is boolean data type so this was all about module number five and i guess you have learned something from this module and hope to see you in the next module thank you guys bye bye take care hello everyone so welcome to the module six that is python variables so what are variables in python i'll give you an example like i have defined a variable a over here and i have assigned value five if you print this a you will be getting output as five as you can see here so over here a is a variable and after that we have local and global variables so what is a local variable and what is a global variable so for example over here a will be considered as a global variable and if we assign any variable which will be inside uh, any indentation for example for i in range zero to ten print i so over here i is a local variable and a is a global variable so over here i'll be printing a as well so every time 5 is being printed so this is a global variable a over here and i will be considered as local variable over here and coming to the global keyword in python i have example over here so in python global keyword allows you to modify the variable outside of the current scope it is used to create a global variable and make changes to the variable in a local context so there are certain rules which need to be followed so i'll just one by one read it out when we create a variable inside a function it is local by default when we define a variable outside a function it is global by default you don't have to use global keyword we use global keyword to read and write a global variable inside a function use of global keyword outside a function has no effect so for example over here you can see this And if I run this, so I'll be getting one as output. So this was the example of global variable. Coming to the second example over here, we have defined C and when we are trying to increment it by two, the error is local variable C referenced before assignment. So there's, it's, you know, searching for local variable, but there is no local variable. That's why it's giving error inside the function. And if you define, if you put that keyword global inside that function, then there will be no error and it will be printed accordingly. So this is point to be noted when you are using, I mean, if you want to use global variable inside function, then you have to typically define it using global keyword. Otherwise there will be error as you can see here. and apart from that there are many other global variables which are already included in python so this was all about the 
module number six that is global variable and local variable so guys i'll see you in the next module that is related to python operators thank you so much guys and have a nice day ahead hello guys so welcome to the module number seven that is python operators so what are python operators operators are used to perform operation on variables and values so for example if we use plus operator so what it does it add two integer values so i'll just show you example over here if we run this So we are getting output as 15 over here, as you can see. So coming to the types of operators in Python. So we have arithmetic operators, assignment operators, comparison operators, logical operators, identity operators, membership operators, and bitwise operators. So coming to the first set of operators, that is Python arithmetic operators. So what are arithmetic operators? So addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus, exponentiation, and flow division. So these are different type of arithmetic operators. So I'll just show you one example for exponent operator and over here, let it run. So we are supposed to get 32 over here because it's two raised to power five. So we are supposed to get 32 and we are getting that. Simple as that. So after that, we have assignment operators. So what are assignment operators? For example, the equal to sign over here, this is used for assigning values to the variables. And over here, these all are plus equal to, this is, you know, short form for X is equal to X plus three. So likewise, there are many assignment operators. Coming to the comparison operators, for example, if we put two is equal to sign, that means we are comparing value of X with Y. If both contain same value, we'll be getting true as result. If it doesn't contain same values, then we'll be getting false as result. So we have different operators over here, like not equal to, greater than, less than, greater than, or equal to, less than, or equal to. So you can just play with these operators and let me know whenever you get time and I'll be there. So coming to the next set of operators that is Python logical operators. So basically there are three kinds of logical operators that is and or last one is not. So you can use this whenever required like over here and will be put or will be there and if you have some uh, maybe some statement and so you can just put it inside bracket and put not so if the value is true so it will be returning opposite of that so that is false so not is very useful in some cases you can try it out and after that coming to the identity operators so in python we have is is not so x is y so if both are you know containing the same value so it will be returning true otherwise false so you can try with this operator as well and there is membership operator in not in so x in y for example there is some list you know uh, y is a list and if there is some value x so you can just type x in y if it's there, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. And coming to the bitwise operator. So bitwise operator, I used to compare binary numbers. 
so there are you know and is there or is there x or not is there so likewise you can just try these operators as well and if you have any issue then you can contact me i'll be there to help you out so i think that's all for this module and i'll see you in the next module and you guys have a nice day enjoy bye bye take care